Thank you for joining me. This is Tim DeLeo with using windowshomeserver.com and the BYOB podcast. In this video, we're going to be adding in a USB 3 card to this HP ProLiant micro server. Uh, this is a great little micro server. It has a five and a quarter bay. Uh, you can open it up and it has four drive bays. Uh, it has its own proprietary motherboard and connections. Uh, and it's really actually a nice little clean unit. So we've got the system off now. So we're going to go and get this opened up and I'll show you how some of this stuff works. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're connected, uh, that you have your um, anti-static mat and everything that we got going here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the power. You can see the power light will go off here. Uh, it was already shut down, so you want to make sure it's ready to go. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through and we're going to pull the tray out. Now we're going to do a couple of different things. We're going to put in this USB 3 card, uh, which I've already converted from uh, high profile or regular profile to low profile. And then we're going to uh, use the connectors and get everything set up. So let me show you how it's done. The first thing that you want to do is you want to check and make sure that you have space for your cables. So we're going to pull these little cables off their little connection spot there, loosen these up. Okay, you can see everything's loose and ready to go. Underneath that are these little blue uh, screws. And most of this is made for without tools. So we're just going to undo these by loosening them up. Kind of got to make sure that the, the screws are out and that everything is going to go through fine. And make sure that anything else is disconnected. Now, as I pull this out, I'm going to stop right here because we have to remove some of the connections. Now, what we have is we have the, um, uh, the USB headers that we have here. We have a SATA port that I used for the ASUS. And then we have some of this. So we're going to be making changes and we're also going to be accessing the back. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to pull out our connectors. You want to be very careful with these. And now I have my board. So with my board, I have a um, PCIe slot. I have the other slot that's here, uh, PCI1. And then I have my RAM. Now it only came with one a gig of RAM. I had a second one that I put in there, uh, but you can see that this is just a regular motherboard. Uh, the CPU underneath, you can see I have the battery, uh, the SATA connection, uh, the proprietary SATA for all four slots. Again, this. So what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be using this in there like that and connecting it that way. So a couple of things we want to do is we want to make sure that we can get to the rest of the board and get to the rest of the unit. Uh, on the back side, there's a screw. All you have to do is pull the screw out, and that will slide the whole front top of the case off. It's very simple, just a little screw in the back. So that will come off. And then we have full access now to the top of the machine and to everything else that we have, including the doors that fall off. Doors just sitting on hinges. It just sits on there like that, ready to go. So we can leave the door off. Thank you very much. And now that everything's fallen off, now we have access to the server and everything else that's here. So what we're going to do is just being careful of all of the cables that we have. We're going to go to the back. Um, on the back side, let's cut off the back side here. We have access to the two uh, PCI one and PCI or the two PCI ports uh, under the thing that we have here. So to do that, all we have to do is push down here and this little thing pops off. So now we can actually pull off our connectors. And you can see here that we have different screws that are throughout the entire thing. Well, one of the nice things about the micro server is that it gives you all of the screws that you need for the drives. It gives you the screws that you need for the optical drive. And it also gives you this handy dandy uh, tiny little Allen wrench key. So you can undo any of the screws that you need to as you go through here. So I'm going to be using the board is coming in from the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the PCI-1 that's shown here. So I need to remove the inside one that we have in this area. So I'm just going to mess around with the little, funny, it's like a little Torx bit or something going on here. Uh, so you can get that on there and then you can undo it. So I will go through and I will pull this out. And I'll get it done from here. Now it's a little tight again, uh, as I talk about already in here. So if you drop something, 
you just want to make sure you keep an eye on it. Uh, I have the, the piece that I have here, and I'm going to dig my hand in there and pull out the stupid little screw that I dropped out because I'm going to need that for the rest of the assembly. So I've got all this good to go. So I'm pretty much ready. Uh, if you wanted to pull out the optical drive and, for example, put it in another drive, uh, you could go ahead and do that now. Uh, there is the ability to unlock. So now we have this here. This comes out. So, for example, one of the things that I'm going to do in a future video is put in this SATA uh, drive bay. Uh, well, basically, I'll just shove a SATA drive in there. Uh, so I'll put that in later on. But you can see it's so easy to pull apart that it's easy enough to do for all of these things. And it's easy enough to do for uh, the remainder of it. So you just want to feed this through like we did before, and it locks into place. And there you go. Uh, the other thing that you want to know about the HP ProLiant is that most of our, uh, our Molex connectors, so I'm going to need another uh, connector for uh, my SATA drive that I have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull off, I had a uh, SATA to Molex connector, and I'm actually going to use uh, the, uh, a component here. This is what was made for the uh, card. This will hook to the card, like you see there, and then this will hook to the SATA. So it's basically like an interrupt almost with an extra thing. So what I'm going to do is, since I already have the uh, SATA portion on here, I'm going to just run this to the drive, pull the other one out, run this down, because it's going to be for the card, which will be very difficult later on, by the way, and then I'm just going to put in the other connector that I have here. So all this will connect together. And it's pretty straightforward. It's just connecting little pieces. You can see it's connected there. Hopefully you can see it. And all of the pins fit. And there we go. So now we've got the pins ready to go. And I can feed down through this connector. I can feed everything that I need down through the top of the case. There's actually a lot of room in the back, so if it comes to cabling and stuff like that, uh, you don't have to mess with it. So uh, we're getting pretty good here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull everything backwards just slightly so we can get that here. And I'm going to get the card ready and get the motherboard ready to go back into the box. So it's just going to slide along the top of the box here and go all the way to the back. Uh, it's hard to see, but there's actually some room down the side of it there. So I'm going to put the card in, okay, like that. So now my card is ready to go. Now I have to have the, the USB 3s take a little bit more power, so they'll usually have these power connectors here. So I'm going to have to get this in and then get that other cable to connect to this as I'm shoving all of this back into the system. So it's kind of a pain. Uh, you want to pull everything off to the side. And again, you want to make sure you're keeping track of the rest of your uh, parts. In addition, I'm going to get down here like this. It goes into these channels. You can see it just slides in like this. And again, you got to fight with these cables all the time. But it just slides into this channel, right? So it's got everything here that's ready to go. So you don't have to really mess with anything else on there. And all of the components come in and out. So what I want to do is I want to get this cable pushed forward as I do this so I can get this thing connected. So I'm going to put my hand in there. You can see it's sitting there ready to go. Uh, the card's in there ready to go. Now, right now, remember, all this stuff's got to go back, right? All these different cables. So I'm going to have to go through and put these cables back on uh, as, as needed for each one of these. So I've got to make sure that they're all clear. So I've got my fan cable. I'm going to do that one first because it's a little bit harder. I've got my uh, SATA cable for the DVD drive, right? This just goes up to the DVD drive here. Uh, I've got my power cable, which I'm going to run across to the top. Okay, got that in there ready to go. Now I've got my SATA cable for the four pin, right? So that one's got to go in here. And again, I'm probably making it much, look much more difficult than it actually is. But I've got that in there. OK, 
Okay, clickaroni. Now I've got my three up here, right? I've got my my um, yellow to yellow. Make sure the pins match up. White to white. Make sure the pins match up. And I've got my front connector, and this one's got the same thing. It's got a little bit of a connector up front. It's only a one-way plug, so you can go through and do it. So now I've got everything put back together. So what I'm going to do is make sure that everything's looking good as I push everything back. So I'm going to turn this sideways now and slowly go back as I get everything lined up. I want to make sure that I've got clearance on uh, the cables in the back and that I've got clearance on everything else uh, that I'm doing, including this power cable, which is becoming quite the little pain in the bottom. So, like I said, it's a little bit of a pain. So you can see here that I've got um, the cabling and everything else that I've got here. Everything's going to line up. You can see I had to move the cables up to the side. I'm going to push everything back in here, right? So everything's lined up and ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my screw, put this back in like I had before using my little tool, whatever I did with that. I put the little screw back into the top to keep the card from moving around. Uh, be careful it doesn't drop back in the case, like I am about to do. Okay, so you can see it's there ready to go. I'll just do a quick finger tight on it. It doesn't have to be super tight. You're also going to remember if you ever have to pull this thing out, you want to undo this first and make sure you watch the cables because uh, you don't want to have this get all jacked up. So we're good in the back. You can see I have my two USB 3s now. Everything else works. Everything here is good to go with that. Let's turn it back around. Okay, I want to line my cables back up. So my three cables go back on this side. Pop those back into their little clip be here. And then go through and I want to put in uh, the screws back on. Again, you can use the, the regular screwdriver for this. Or you can use your fingers or whatever you want to do, but I'm going to go through and get the motherboard uh, tied back down and worked with this. In fact, I should keep the screws off here or keep the cables off and do it this way. So there we go. So everything is back in. So cable one, cable two, and cable three is all set. So now I've got everything back and connected. I'm going to check all of my connectors, make sure everything looks good. I'm done with my tool, so I'm going to put my tool back in uh, the door. Uh, the door is all ready to go. Again, I've got all the extra screws and everything else here. So the door just sits in its own little spot. Takes just a moment to line up. So now I've got my screws and everything here ready to go. I'm going to make sure that everything else fits. So I'm going to put my top back on. Okay, so I got my top here ready to go. You want to make sure that everything here lines up as well. So you want to make sure that um, the front case lines up and that everything fits in the way it's supposed to. And then you want to finish your little screw up here in the back. Okay, so now I've got my door here and assuming that I've got it locked properly. There we go. So let's recap now. Let's make sure that everything's going to work. Again, I wanted to make sure that I had USB 3 on here. Uh, again, I used the half height connector, which is what we have here, the stock plate versus a full one. So make sure if you're going to buy one of these, you buy one that has the adapter kit. Has the screws on there ready to go. Uh, it has Molex connectors inside the HP. So you want to make sure that you have a connector. Um, if you're going to be connecting the top drive, uh, you want to make sure that you have a couple of these around. You may need them. Uh, I showed you, you could have changed the RAM while we're in there. You could have added it into the drive. So now let's go through and let's connect it back up. So the first thing we're going to do is power. Then we're going to hook up the uh, EVGA. Then we're going to hook up my network cable. And then we're going to do USB 2 for the keyboard and the other setup. So you can see I got power. Let's hit the power and let's look for smoke.
Now this is a HP ProLiant microserver. And on this one, I am running Windows Home Server 2011. This is the RTM version. So it's going to take just a moment to uh, boot up. The boot times are considerably faster with Windows Home Server 2011. Uh, it does run 64-bit. This is a nice processor. This is a very, very clean setup. Uh, I have the DVD drive here. Uh, I personally uh, like some of the Buffalo equipment. So here is the Buffalo USB 3. Uh, it's going to come with a uh, utility for installing the driver. So we'll get going in a minute for that. But I just wanted to show you that everything is up and running. Get everything up. And we are good to go. So now all I have to do is load the drivers up and I am USB 3 uh, at tremendous speeds for my backups. So thank you for joining me. Check back with usingwindowshomeserver.com for all of your needs for Windows Home Server 2011. See you soon.